application security. Boo. Most developers and companies believe their applications to be secure and understand the importance of security. However, year after year, they continue to push vulnerable code into production. In order to avoid these pitfalls and improve the overall security of our applications, we need to understand what application security is all about. Application security is about taking steps to ensure that the software we're building and deploying is protected from dangers. It involves taking actions and procedures throughout the application lifecycle to ensure and prevent malicious actors from accessing data and our code through vulnerable software and hardware. In simple terms, this is like having smoke detectors to alert us of vulnerabilities found or issues within our code. We need digital locks to keep out bad actors from having access to our apps without permission. We need to implement measures like these to help ensure the security of our application. This will also enable us to capture, alert on, and prevent any types of dangers that are happening within our apps. Now, since every app is a bit different, these measures that we're gonna be covering are not comprehensive. So you should consider more to help you identify additional ways your app can be used unintentionally and start securing there. But enough about the whys and the what's. Let's dig into the hows of application security. There are six different types of application security. Authentication, authorization, data processing, encryption, logging, and testing. Six, like that. Let's start with authentication and authorization. Authentication is about identifying you within a system and authorization is determining what permissions or things you're allowed to do within that system. Using github.com as an example, authentication is when you use your username, password, and or two-factor authentication to get into your account. Authorization is the set of controls that keeps you from getting access to say, somebody else's repositories that are private. Authentication and authorization tend to happen simultaneously from a user's perspective, and so that's why you'll often find them lumped together. After that, we get into data processing, which you can also think of as input handling. You need to make sure that when users are providing data into your system, they do so in a way that meets your expectations of what that data is supposed to be. As an example to illustrate this, think of an email address and what that looks like. When a user enters an email, you expect it to have a string, like someone's name, then an et symbol, and then a domain like google.com or gmail.com. But you don't expect that email to be something else. You don't expect it to be code, and you need to make sure that somebody isn't trying to do that within that field. Now, this is not only limited to users inputting data directly in your system. This could be data that's coming in from another system that you need to also validate. An example of this is in scenarios where you rely on data from other APIs or services. Next up, we have encryption, which can mean a lot of things. The simplest way I would describe it, and I might be oversimplifying things here a bit, but it's about sealing and locking information such that you can't access it unless you have the key. So even if someone steals the data, they can't really do anything with it without having that key. An example of this type of encryption is, let's say you have data inside of a database and you want that data to be encrypted. You would use an encryption algorithm along with a specific key that would then transform the data into a format that's not human readable. Then, in order to access that data for reading later on, the only way you'll be able to do so is by decrypting it using the key. All right, next up is logging, which is an aspect of monitoring, and if you're fancy, observability. Logging is a way to help detect, and for research purposes, identify where there are security issues within your application. For example, logging information about what a user might be doing or attempting to do that's malicious in your app. So going back to our discussion from before about data processing. When somebody's trying to input malicious data in an email field, let's say you can log that. You can detect those failed attempts to enter an email as an example, which will help in identifying and blocking bad actors. You can even use that logging data to create automated alerts based on certain thresholds. Like when your IT department sends you a Slack message after your fifth failed login attempt. And last but not least is testing. Now, typically for developers, testing consists of ensuring the functions and operations within your code are behaving as expected but it also needs to handle the unexpected scenarios. However, that's just one area of testing. In addition to that, there's security testing. An example of security testing is penetration testing, which involves having security researchers and experts attempt to break into your applications and systems on a periodic basis to ensure that it is still safeguarded. And that is a brief overview of application security. This can feel cumbersome, tedious, and overwhelming, especially if we're doing this manually. 
but this is where tools come into play to help simplify things for us. What are some security tools that can help us secure our applications? Well, there are many out there, but we are going to focus on four different types of security tools. That is software composition analysis, static application security testing, dynamic application security testing, and interactive application security testing. That's a lot. That's a mouthful. Now I'm going to dive into these deeper, but here's the quick summary of them first. Software Composition Analysis, or SCA, SCA, is about security scanning of your dependencies. Second, we had Static Application Security Testing, or SAST, S-A-S-T. This is about security scanning of the code you write. Next is Dynamic Application Security Testing, or DAST, D-A-S-T, which is about scanning your code while it's running. And last but not least is Interactive Application Security Testing, or IAST, I-A-S-T, which is about scanning your code while it's running and simulating the way users would commonly interact with it. Let's start with software composition analysis, which is also known as origin analysis. This method analyzes all the software components and libraries you're pulling into your application that you didn't write yourself. SCA tools help you identify known vulnerabilities and notify you of any patches, config fixes, such as disabling a feature, or other remediation options. Now, what does that mean in practical terms? It means if you're relying on open source libraries that you pull into your application, you need a SCA tool to actively monitor those libraries for vulnerabilities so you don't have to do that manually. Vulnerabilities are regularly disclosed and reported on in open source libraries. So you can either be constantly on the lookout for disclosures about all your known libraries, or you can use the SCA tool to handle it. As no two SCA tools are the same, it's important to pick one that handles all the languages you use within your applications, gets updated regularly, and provides recommended fixes for you. Some SCAs go even further, like Sneak Open Source, by adding automated fix capabilities right into your workflows. Up next is Static Application Security Testing, also known as White Box Testing, where you scan your source code at rest. SAST identifies weaknesses that may lead to a vulnerability, and then either generate a report from the results or provide a fix in real time to the person writing the code. One example of a Static Application Security Testing tool is Sneak Code. This will analyze your application code as you write it, identify potential vulnerabilities, and provide suggested fixes right from within your IDE, or integrated development environment. From there, we have dynamic application security testing. Unlike static application security testing, this is done while the application is running. The testing is done without requiring in-depth knowledge of how the system works internally. DAS tools will analyze running code and identify issues with the requests and responses any interfaces, scripts, injections, authentication, and sessions. It uses what's called fuzzing to perform such a test. Last but not least is interactive application security testing. This is about combining static and dynamic testing approaches. These perform testing on application and data flow using predefined test cases. The tool may recommend additional test cases based on a result of this. So in closing, what did we learn? We learned what application security is, why application security is important, and how we can go about securing our applications. We also learned about some of the tools that are available to help with all this, along with their purposes and examples of them. Now, all of this was a very brief overview of application security. And if you wanna go more in depth and learn deeper than what we did in this video, you can check out the Sneak Learn module on the complete guide to application security. Link is in the description below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.